everybody, I'm Mahine and this is your Sunday in the Studio edition of the Billy Dance Quickies. Today we're going to do something a little bit different instead of a combination or a drill. So today we're going to be talking body geometry. We're going to talk about planes of movement and the angles where things can best be seen and why we may want to present a movement in one angle as opposed to another. So in order to do this, we need to think about the plane the movement happens in. Now I did do another video on body planes of movement and you can find that down there if you're not familiar with this, um, but I'm going to give you the really brief rundown at the moment. So we're going to talk about movement that goes on a flat frontal plane, so movements that may go side to side like this or up and down like this, but you can imagine movements that if you were a flat paper doll, you could still have that plane of movement right there. The next ones are movement that happens on a horizontal plane, so you have to think about parallel to the floor and the ceiling. So here you would be thinking about any kind of movement that moves in any direction this way through the body, like a tabletop, imaginary tabletop. And the last one is going to be movement that moves through the body this way. So things that happen in a front to back kind of a direction through the body. I'm going to give you some examples of each of those and we're going to look at how they can be seen from different angles. So let's go ahead and start with the frontal plane. So here you have movements that either happen up and down like this, flat, or across flat. So for example, let's take just a regular old hip slide to the side, okay? Just out to one side and out to the other side. So this movement is happening right here. Now if I turn on a diagonal, I'm going to use the same you know, effort and bigness of movement. Now I'm now in 45 degrees to the camera right here and you can see how that's seen differently. Now I'm going to turn 90 degrees to the camera and you can see here. Now I'm going to start to turn back. Here I'm going to go back to 45 degrees and then I'm going to go back to flat on parallel to the camera. Now if you look at that you can see how it changes how we view a movement. Now the point here is that you want your movement to be at least 45 to 90 degrees from the angle of viewing. So if someone was going to be looking straight on at you, if you could kind of imagine a laser beam from their eyes, you want your movement angle to be perpendicular or 45 degrees at least to their view. Because as soon as you start and turn and you're more in line with that line of their view, the movement is pretty diminished and you don't get the full impact of what you're doing. So that's one way to think about this. So let's look at some other examples here. Let's look at, um, let's look at a hip circle. Now, a hip circle, you're thinking, okay, well, is this on the same plane? Well, no, it's not, because where your flat hip out to the side was staying all right here, your hip circle has to come to the front and the back. So although we do pass through two common points out here at the side, going through the front and the back means the shape of this is actually going parallel to the floor. So now we are on a horizontal plane. So this though, because this is the way it is, and it's going front and back and to the sides, as we turn, it doesn't lose much of its impact because we still have some parts of the movement that have a significant angle difference from the angle that an audience flat onto your foot position might be. So here we don't lose too much. All right, now let's look at another example. So this plane here is if you can imagine something that cuts your body down with the right side and the left side. So movements that go in this field right here, we have a couple of them. We have undulations because these take our body forward and back. They happen on this plane. We also have camels and we can have chest rolls, all kinds of things. But let's look at an undulation as our example for this. So if I do an undulation forward, we can see it, especially if you get really good articulation through your torso, or if you add a belly roll to it or something. So here, you can see it right here, but if I turn my body just 45 degrees, you should be able to see a bit more. And now if I turn my body 90 degrees, the same amount of movement will give you a bigger effect. And I'm going to turn back again, back to 45, and then back to the front. 
So you can see that you're not really wasting your time with an undulation facing forward, but as you turn and you get closer to 90 degrees from the angle that you're seeing it, then it really does have a lot more visual impact. Now some movements just get plain old lost if you turn in certain angles. For example, a vertical chest circle. So this is going this way. So this is on a frontal plane right here. And you can see that really, really well from the front. You can see it pretty well on 45 degrees. As soon as you turn to 90 degrees here, someone looking this way can discern that something's happening with the chest, but might not really be able to tell what's going on, and probably not the best angle choice for presenting a movement like that, unless you're like just doing one of them and to transition into something else that's going to be more visible. So anyway, I um, just wanted to kind of show you some demonstration about how things look. And this is one of the reasons why with choreography, uh, the angle that you have people standing on for certain movements, whether it's 45 degrees or uh, straight forward or whether it needs to be at a perfect profile, can really impact the cleanness and the impact of the size of your movement or the perceived size of your movement, I should say. So a uh, little bit of a more esoteric BDQ this week, but one I think that uh, is useful, especially if you are using your movements for performance or for writing choreography. So it's a way to think about how to make them more visible and showcase what you're doing better. So hope you guys like this one and have a good week and I'll see you next time.